Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me Mark and welcome to the official BleamSync 1.0 tutorial video. It's come at last. The time has come for you to install BleamSync 1.0 on your PS Classic. The guys behind the scenes at Mod My Classic have been working tirelessly to get this to us and finally it is here and we can crack on. So let's get straight into it guys. There's loads to cover. First things first, there is a new website for you to go to. It is modmyclassic.com forward slash bleamsync. When you click on that, you'll come up to this page and there is a absolute ton of stuff in here about how to get started with bleamsync 1.0. As I scroll down, you'll see here it's got why BleamSync, requirements to use BleamSync, how to use BleamSync, where to download, latest feature list, and YouTuber videos and FAQ. Now, at the time I've been making this video, this is the night before it's uh, released, so there are a few things missing off this page, but the links will appear here. So go to the link in the description below, click on that, and you'll come to here. And all the instructions are here, guys. Look, how to install from fresh, how to migrate from older versions of BleamSync, how to migrate from other previous tools, how to use BleamSync once installed. So there's, there's user guides for everything. SwingFlip's done those user guides and they're, they're brilliant. So the latest feature list as well is there in case you want to know what's been added. But there is so much, it will take me an hour to go through it. So that is the website modmyclassic.com forward slash bleamsync you'll find the download link there plus you'll find guides if you want to follow those guides as well as following my video now once you've downloaded it you will end up with a zip file at the moment mine is called bleamsync 1.0 rc2 the final one you're going to see is probably called bleamsync 1.0 it's the same as ever but in this video i'm going to show you how to do a fresh install and in the next video, which will come out shortly after, I'm going to show you how to do an upgrade. Try and do it this way. Try and do the fresh install. It is the better way of doing it because it's so brand new and so much has changed. I personally would suggest you do the fresh install. We will cover it anyway in the next video. So fresh install, what do we do? First things first, grab your USB stick, plug it into your PC and format the sucker. Okay, so let me open up my PC here and you'll see here I've already formatted, but I'm just gonna show you what to do first of all. Format, same as ever, do it FAT32 to start off with and I'll explain why in a little bit. So label it as Sony, as always, get that formatted as so. Once it's formatted, click OK and exit the format tool. That is your USB stick ready, empty. The BleemSync zip file contains two folders. That is all you need for this. There isn't the five or six folders that we had before. So all we need to do is just copy those across to our USB stick. Once those files are copied across, take the USB stick out of your PC and grab your PS Classic. Now make sure that your PS Classic does not have the power plugged into it at this stage. And make sure also that there's no powered hubs plugged into your PS Classic either. Okay, so here we go. PS Classic at the ready. Make sure the power's taken out. And you can then plug the USB into the second port, as always, right there. At this point, plug the USB in. Wait for it to light up. And then you'll want to power on your PlayStation Classic. So just click right there and you'll notice the LED change color. Onto the screen of the PS Classic, you will see the following. The boot up menu comes up, as always, and then we're onto the Bleem Sync screen. Look at this, Bleem Sync. The initial hack is now complete. <laughs> Console will restart in five seconds. So that's an addition right there. They've crossed that out. I'm sure that won't be in the final version, but there you go. Have a little chuckle at that. At this point, the PlayStation will power down. And what I want you to do is take the USB stick out of the PlayStation Classic. The reason we're going to do that is so we can reformat the USB stick as NTFS. Now, this is a faster file system and it's better for games moving forward. So we plug the USB stick in and what I need you to do is open up the stick and cut those files off the drive. So let's create a folder on our desktop called Gleam back up there we go cut those into there wait for that to finish so now that the drives empty and you've copied all those folders over you need to go back and you need to format the drive again 
So click on format like that and I will show you why right here. You can see just down here it's highly recommended that you format the USB to either XFAT or NTFS. X4 is also supported but XFAT seems to function better and extract the backup back to the root of your USB device. So you can probably get away with continuing to use FAT32 but this is a better faster file system so definitely worth doing at this stage. So in the file system choice right here you have NTFS, FAT32 and XFAT. I'm going to choose XFAT as it said it's the best choice and click start. Make sure it's labelled as Sony still. Click OK and that will format. So now my drive is ready. I need to copy the folders back on so let's do that. I'm going to cut them back in. All this stuff really is to future proof your drive and make it better and faster for the future. Future versions and updates will support this so it's definitely worth doing at this stage. So now that the folders are copied over we are pretty much ready. You can pull the USB stick out of your PC and then plug it back into your PlayStation Classic. So now that all the files are on the USB and the USB is all ready we can plug it back into port 2 on the PlayStation Classic. Make sure that the power is out at this stage. Now the thing that we have unlocked by doing that hack is the opportunity to plug it into a standard PC USB port. This is amazing news. This means you don't have, it, have to have it plugged into a plug socket. This is probably one of the biggest downfalls I found early doors about the PlayStation Classic. Very, very annoying that it had to be an actual plug rather than just a standard USB port. The guys at Mod My Classic have sorted this out. They've unlocked the USB port and allowed it to connect to a PC. So plug that into one of your USB ports on your PC and then plug it into your PlayStation Classic. So we've got the USB in. We've got the cable going from the power here to our PC. Let's power it up. I'll show you the intro screen and then we're going to have to head back to our PC to look at the user interface so we can upload some games. So here we go. Intro screen first of all. Then we move on to Bleem Sync. And then we get the boot menu. Here we are. Look at this. And can you hear that? We have music. We have music on the boot menu. That music can be changed in case you don't like it, but I think it's awesome. It's very 90s. Great work on that. So you have the choice obviously here of RetroArch and BleemSync. If you go into BleemSync, it will bring up the original carousel and it will have the original 20 games on it, which is a massive improvement. You can mix the original 20 games with all your new games that you're gonna to upload to your USB, and it doesn't take any of the memory space on your USB. It stays on the PlayStation. So there we go, that's the main menu. That now opens up the opportunity for us to be able to browse from our browser to the BleemSync user interface and we can upload games. So let's do that right now. Okay, so we're back on our PC. Let's open up our browser. So I'm using Firefox here. You can use whatever the heck you want. Chrome, Internet Explorer, whatever. So let's open a new tab. What we put in here is bleemsyncui.com. Hit enter. That brings up the BleemSync user interface in your browser. Look at this. Here is how you upload games. It's very, very simple. You click on Browse, you find your game, you highlight both the queue and the bin files. Very, very important. You have to highlight both. Click Open. There you go. It finds the game. And at the bottom here, you can see Add Game. So it fills out all that stuff for you. It finds the cover image for you and everything else. You can change this if you want. And all you have to do then is click Add Game. So there we go, once the game completes you will see it in this game manager right here. You'll see Wipeout 3 or whatever game you've added. And that is literally all there is to adding games. It is literally that simple. As long as you've got the bin and queue files, you can add them that way. Currently there is no way to bulk add games. This is something that is going to be added a little later on into BleemSync. But for now, we're individually adding PlayStation games. With all the other games into RetroArch, we can bulk add those into the RetroArch folder by taking the USB stick out, putting it in the PC, and then adding those games into the folder. So now that we've got a game on there, let's have a look at the settings that we can mess about with. In the system preferences, there is a whole load of stuff about the launcher menu, perspective, data paths, and all this kind of stuff. 
I would just leave this if I was you, because if you change any of this, you're going to end up breaking it. So the, the settings you want to look at, the preferences you want to look at are the Bleem Sync preferences. This is where it gets a bit interesting. So first of all, use runtime logs is ticked. If true, clear down logs on each boot up. If true, dumps will redump on boot regardless of flag. So none of this stuff you need to change. If true, dynamically links eMMC games on top of USB games. So this is the stock games. So if you don't want to see those 20 games on your carousel and you just want to see the games you've added, untick this. If you're happy seeing those games, just leave it ticked. Uh, next one, if true, then auto alphabetize eMMC and USB games. This is amazing. This is one big addition in that all the games in your carousel will automatically be in alphabetical order if you leave this ticked. If you don't want it that way, then untick it. Next one, if true, then RetroArch is the emulator for stock UI. This is a big one again because this means that RetroArch runs the PS1 games. So not just all those other emulators in like Snares and Arcade and all that kind of stuff, but the actual PS1 games from the stock user interface. So from the carousel, when you launch a game, it will launch using the RetroArch emulator. So I'm going to tick this because that's something I want to do and I want to test Wipeout as part of this video. Uh, next one, enable quick boot, disables initial Sony animation splash. So yes, I'm going to turn that on uh, to enable quick boot. Next one, disables health warning, left on by default for health and safety. So this is another one you can turn off to make the boot a bit quicker. The other options you've got here are to boot directly to the stock UI. If you only want PlayStation games, then boot directly to the stock UI. The other ones are boot directly to RetroArch. If you just want RetroArch on this, if you just want it to be all run from the RetroArch user interface, you can boot directly to RetroArch. And finally, boot directly to the boot menu selector. So that is the options that we had, where we had RetroArch and Bleem Sync. So if you leave that ticked, it will always go to that screen where you've got the choice. And I feel like for me, that's the better one because I want the choice as to what I play and how I play it. So scrolling down, there's a bunch of other stuff, including location of RetroArch, location of image files if you want to upload some image files if you want to upload some themes these are the locations of those files also the sound files so if you want to upload a different sound file for the introduction screen you can upload it there scrolling down you'll see a few more locations and then you've got theme names so you can change this theme name to be whatever theme you've got uploaded but what I think is better is this select a random theme from the themes folder. So if you dump a load of themes into that themes folder, it will randomly select one if you tick this. Finally, if you really don't like that music on the boot screen, you can just untick this to stop the boot menu music. Click save, it will reboot the PS Classic, and then it will be ready to go. So let's head on back over to the PS Classic and let's see what difference that has made. Okay, so let's turn on the PlayStation and we're gonna see how quickly it boots up now that we've enabled those options. So first things first, we should see the Bleem Sync screen. Yep, here we go. And then it should move on to the choices of RetroArch and Bleem Sync. There you go. So that's a fair amount quicker. We've got rid of all that health and safety and the um, main screen with the PlayStation animation. And we've got our music still, so it's up to you if you wanted to can the music. So let's head on over into Bleem Sync and see what we've got. Look at this. We have the original 20 games all in there, still on the internal memory of the PS Classic. And then we have the game that we added. So if we click on the game, it will launch using the RetroArch emulator. So here we go, it's Wipeout 3 using the RetroArch emulator. I had so many problems with this game before and it looks like we're okay to go using the RetroArch emulator. The way we know we are using the RetroArch emulator is to press start and select on the controller and look at that, you get the RetroArch menu. So all the settings that you can do in RetroArch you can do here, but that just proves that it's using that emulator. So if I go back and resume, then we're back in the game. And as you can see, it's running like an absolute dream. Look at this, Wipeout 3, guys. I haven't tried Wipeout XL um, because I know that had problems as well. Right, let's head back to the main menu right now. So I press start and select in the game and I will get the RetroArch menu. I can then close the content from here and it will boot me back 
to Retroarch. Now that seems like a little bit of a glitch at the moment, but all you do is you press circle and go down to quit Retroarch to go back to the carousel. It will save that save state, which is nice. So if I just say yes, you do have a resume point from the point you went, and you're still in the stock UI, you're still within that carousel. Now one thing you might have noticed is the fact that there is a theme on this carousel now. That is part of the themes packages. If you want to change that, then go ahead and chuck a different theme into that folder and you're good to go. And it will change, like I said before, you can randomize it so that it changes every time you log in. So to go back to the choice menu and browse again to add more games, just power off the PS Classic and then power it back on You'll get back to the choice menu and you will then be able to go back and browse it using your browser again, just like before. So that's it guys, that is the tutorial. You should be up and running with lots of games in no time at all. Make sure you follow those steps and make sure you use the BleemSync website for all your guides and everything else that you need to go along with this video. Thank you so much for coming along and thank you to everyone that's been supporting the Game Shed. Feel free to jump on over and follow us on social media etc. All the links are in the description below. All the links for this video are in the description below as well. Once again thank you so much for coming along and I will see you next time.